Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folare. Uh, I'm alongside uh, Dari Odufowoko this morning. Uh, Dari is assistant editor. Thank you very much. And good morning, assistant editor, The Nation newspaper. And um, we'll also be linking up with our uh, Uzonna Onoye, executive editor at TVC News. And we shall hopefully be joined by DG of the Plateau Peace Building Agency, Mr. Joseph Langman. Now, all of that is before telling you about the subject matter, but you've probably guessed it already. Um, it, it's, it's going to be on um, the uh, Joss situation, uh, the matter of the stability in Joss. Uh, it wasn't all that good, which is why a curfew was imposed, but we've now since heard that the governor has relaxed the curfew in Joss. Um, that's sort of um, uh, well, good news, you know. Yeah, well, at least. Uh, okay. Fair news, I would say. Uh, uh, it's better than what it's oh, okay. Uh, well, good morning to you. Um, uh, that's Mr. Legman. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Thank good you. morning, uh, viewers. Thank you very much. DJ Plateau Peace Building Agency, Joseph uh, Lengman. We'll be with you uh, shortly. And um, in studio here, as I was just introducing, uh, we have Mr. Dari Odufowoko, Assistant Editor of the Nation newspaper. Now, talking about um, the relaxing of the curfew, it, it hasn't been, well, relaxing is the word. It was used yeah. advisedly. Yeah. Uh, th this at least would be pointing in the direction of progress, perhaps you would agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Of course, for the governor to agree that the coffee should be relaxed and the time frame sort of reduced, he must have seen some signs of uh, improvement in, in, in the security situation. Because what led to, no, don't forget, just not, is not the only place where coffee was imposed in Plateau. Uh, but yes, south, but it is the just uh, north. The, uh, the, 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 the latest. Yes, the, that, that was the one that has been relaxed. Uh, of course, the other ones too were relaxed uh, sometimes earlier. Ago. So now, just north will be at par with those. Other. What I'm trying to point out is that across the plateau, there has been so much uh, uh, violence, so much uh, fear, anxiety over insecurity that if we now have a news that says uh, we are relaxing coffee. We would obviously have the feeling that oh, things. Are, you <laughs> saw the rate at which people were evacuating. Uh, all sorts of states were picking I their mean, people out. Picking their people. You, you know what? Our, our, our own executive editor, uh, Uzana, uh, on air. He's you know off, uh, over in Jos, and um, mm -hmm. we can speak with him now. I am told. Ah, there you are. Yes. Good morning to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Uzon. I know you have a tight schedule. There's so much ground to cover. But uh, we were just talking about the um, local gov uh, the just north, uh, uh, the, the coffee being lifted there. That would seem to indicate that things are a lot better. And as uh, Dari Odufawoko in studio was pointing out, um, there are other uh, areas where the curfew had been, really, uh, had been relaxed. Now, this is the latest that has been relaxed by the governor, right? Uh, well, last night, uh, the governor, there was a press statement from the governor uh, saying that Just North will come down from 6 to 6, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., now to from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. to be in line, with, in sync with two other local governments, okay. Just South and Bassa local government. Well, uh, whether it signifies or indicates that things are returned to normal is relative because there are still uh, cases of attacks, you know, yes, yesterday there was none, but two days ago there was in, in, in one area in, 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 in Plateau State. And then, um, even in just north itself, we, we monitored round last night, uh, through just south and just north. We went round everywhere. There was peace. There was very, you know, you know, the, the whole places were calm, but we also recognized that some of these attacks do, do, do not, you know, they, they are timely. They know when they want to strike and when they don't want to strike. Uh, but the state government and other security agencies here in Plateau State are all conscious of this and are taking steps to ensure that the, the, the peace already achieved is sustained. I will point out immediately, you know, that everyone has recognized that the real responsibility of bringing peace to plateau does not lie in the hands of security agencies or government itself but in the hands of the people for them to agree to live together and understand themselves and 
allow peace to reign. So everyone had kept peace to plateau does not lie in the hands of security agencies or government itself, but in the hands of the people for them to agree to live together and understand themselves and allow peace to reign. So everyone had kept emphasizing this point and until it sinks down into the consciousness of the people themselves, we may still have a very long way to go. Mm. You know, one, one of the sticky points about this whole uh, scenario here is that uh, as you were speaking and telling us what's uh, what with the lie of the ground, there are those who will be wondering, so what exactly caused the crisis? Now, I imagine that is a humongous question, and it doesn't bear any simple answers. Uh, and especially as you were referring to the need to continually re-emphasize to the citizens themselves that it's all up to you guys. You, we have to live together. Uh, pretty complex origins of the problem, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the, the one major incident that is being remembered at this time took place 20 years ago. Mm. On this, it started on the 7th of September and lasted for 10 good days. It, in that one incident, up to 8,000 people out there, you know, were killed. That's the report that is out there, you know, available to be seen. Up to 8,000 people. That was also around the time that there was a twin attack in the U.S., uh, that we refer to popularly as 9-11, where about 3,000 were killed. And so it, it's, 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 it has been a continuation of crisis from one point to another. However, for the past six years, for the past six years, there have been relative peace on the plateau. There have not been cases of attacks and communal or religious, ethno-religious or whatever clashes. You know, it has been, there has been relative peace until quite recently. Some say that it's uh, instigated by politics because the state is about to go into local government election in the next two months, in November. Um, others believe that it is the interest of people on the plateau. You will recognize that about 50 ethnic nationalities are here on Pla in Plateau State. And with all diversities of religion and interest and all of that, the weather of uh, Plateau State is quite interesting that everyone wants to be here. So the interest here is quite high. And so it's a bit complex to manage all of those interests and ensure that there is uh, no, no one feels uh, uh, being cheated or overused. So it, it's what led to this current situation may still not be very clear, you know, but when we analyze it properly, it will still point to the same problem, ethnic, ethnicity, religion, and politics. Mm. And um, the situation has been sufficiently worrying um, uh, that states, uh, as is common knowledge now, uh, have been pulling out uh, their citizens, especially students, because of the violence around um, the, the University of Jaws and the Forestry College there. Um, uh, newspaper reports are saying that Benue um, Enugu uh, Abia Ogun Oyo, Kogi Kwara, and Gombe have successfully evacuated uh, their students. So uh, that can't be helping uh, the, the sense of um, relative stability, can it? If people feel that it's so, it's sufficiently out of hand that parents are saying, we got to withdraw our kids. Well, the state government had uh, complained and, you know, uh, about that reaction from states in evacuating their people, saying that the situation is not as bad as it's made to uh, appear. Well, we, we came in and we went round that just north where the University of Jaws was, uh, is located. We tried to find out what led to that incident in the first place and we, we discovered that it was more of a reprisal attack where some people use the, uh, the tricycle, tricycle riders, and they pick people, or suspecting people who felt that they are moving from one place to another, and then the, the riders end up killing them. And um, that created some apprehension and some panic around the university community, which is located where uh, uh, it may not be very sensitive to say, you know, to profile anyone or, or whatever, but the location of the university is such that um, it's of concern to security agencies. And then the state government, we understand, moved swiftly 
to protect the students and provide welfare for them, those that are still on campus. We understand that a lot of them are still on campus. The people that were evacuated were um, a minimal percentage of the total number of students in, in the university. However, okay. mm -hmm. I would admit that uh, the, the tension had not been um, easy to deal with. Indeed. And um, as you were just saying, the, whereas the government is, you know, sort of trying to explain the situation that it's uh, a lot better than it would seem, um, there also are sort of indications that some of those people um, that wanted to come out and have not been able to be evacuated are sort of trapped. Uh, well, that is the feeling. But from what you're telling me now, that would not be the feeling of authorities are trapped in no, 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 no. In, in the place and uh, no, no, marauding no. the idea. Uh, and this is what you can either confirm no. or dispel marauding, you know, uh, assailants that are just, uh, you know, wreaking violence on whoever they don't know uh, is a concern. Your commentary on that notion. We went to, yeah, we, we went to University of Joss area last night. There was nothing like uh, marauding um, uh, people that want to kill. You know, the students that are on campus were told to stay back. Food and other necessities were provided for them. And some of them actually prefer to stay back. You know, so it's not a case that they are trapped. Okay. If anyone wants to leave the place, the person can leave because between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., normal activity is going on in that area. Oh, okay, that's good to hear. And the the authorities, are, uh, as much as we have you, because um, we, you won't be able to stay for uh, the entirety of the program. We appreciate that. Um, that's why it's very valuable the little time that we do have you. Um, the authorities in in uh, in Plateau are doing all they can. Um, what to show? What is it? Empathy. The uh, House of Assembly, I understand, has has you know visited some uh, victims. Uh, the government itself has decided, uh, uh, has you know, announced that it will be picking picking up our hospital tabs. Hospitals themselves have been admitting patients without uh, a deposit. You know, everybody's just sort of cooperating to bring this uh, back to dom normal. Exactly. Uh, th there's a high level of cooperation. One of the person that you're going to speak with is the chairman of the Plateau State Peace Building Program or you know something like that. They've been working so hard to get people yes. to understand the necessity or the importance of peace and, and they are doing this from many angles, getting people, religious leaders, ethnic, leader, ethnic, ethnic leaders, yes, and even uh, political leaders to cooperate. But however, there will still be those who will think that the crisis is the best option for them to push a across whatever they have in mind as their views. Mm. Okay, uh, thank you, Zona. Let me, as you, you know, for that prompt, thank you for that prompt, because um, the person you're talking about is uh, Mr. Joseph Lengman. He is Director General, Plateau Peace Building Agency. Uh, back to you again. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I was, with th that point that we left it on that, everybody seems to be working for, um, for understanding and for peace, calm, uh, I, I had mentioned um, the state's House of Assembly visiting and uh, reportedly, uh, you know, leaving or donating a sum of money that was not made known. The governor has said he will pick up, uh, um, you know, the bill of all those who are injured and that kind of a thing. Um, is, is enough being done, in your opinion, Mr. Legman? Well, I mean, so much has been done, and I think so much work needs to be done going forward. And indeed, everyone is doing his bit in that respect. And that only, you know, brings to the fore one simple truism that in uh, looking at the kind of a peace and security challenges we are facing, it is everybody's business to deliver on the promise of peace and security. And that is the reason why people from different segments of the society are rising up. And even moderate voices have been amplified. The government is playing its own part. Security agencies are also trying to step up. Traditional institutions are also doing their best. And I think religious institutions are also doing their best. Our role here as that uh, you know, dedicated institutional framework for conflict prevention and peace building is to harness all these resources together to deal with a problem that has proven, or rather is proving to be somewhat insoluble over time. Mm. Uh, a lot of lessons have been learned, like if you're, when going through your discussion with your official from here, 
so much has gone into the post-conflict peace building process. We have thought that like 20 years ago, yesterday was the 20th anniversary of the first eruption or outbreak of high intensity violence in Plateau State. And that day, 7th September 2001, just lost its innocence. Of course, the name, the Plateaus, I mean, Plateau State being the home of peace and tourism, you know, was being questioned as a result of that horrific incident. Uh, a lot of things have been learned uh, within the last 10 years or 20 years. Uh, uh, we thought, uh, on the other hand, it appears also that we need to do much more than what we are doing. Uh, the issues of conflict in this state, like you have rightly alluded to, are very complex, very profound. And somehow, uh, even though we want to see it from our own point of view, but it, there is also a national dimension to all of this. I think if you allow me, I will say what you're seeing in Plateau is the crisis of Nigeria. Why? Because Plateau State is a miniature Nigeria uh, in all respect. And I think that is why people are very worried and concerned by what has happened. We've enjoyed some relative peace, by the way, since the assumption of office of his Excellency, the Executive Governor of Plateau, Plateau State, right, Honorable Dr. Simon Bakola, along because of his philosophy and because of his policy as far as peace, security, and good governance is concerned. When he came in, he tried to change the approach from being reactive, which indeed was what characterized previous responses of successive administrations over the years. He said there should be a significant change or shift if I may use that word, from being reactive to proactive. And that was what culminated into the setting up of this Plateau State Peace Building Agency. And the idea essentially is that people must be put at the center of working together with decisions that has to do with issues of peace and security in different communities across the 17 local government areas of Plateau State. Mm. His approach actually yielded some result as evident by what all of us have re I mean, recognized, six years without any outbreak of high intensity conflict until within the last two, I know, two, three months, uh, as we have said it. And it tells you clearly that as much as the government and the peace building agency and other responsible stakeholders are working to deepen the ideals of sustainable peace, there are other people out there, few of them who are equally as determined as the government to bring down the roof upon everybody's head and to, to take us back or to do those gory paths because the more the chaos perhaps the more they smile to the banks or the more the chaos the more they get some kind of a chip to negotiate the next political dispensation or the political space in general and for a variety of reasons but the good news is that the government is on its toes the peace building agency will never despair we are not relenting we are moving out we are doing our very best mobilizing galvanizing ordinary communities to do extraordinary things for peace indeed and um it, it, as you also alluded to it's it's um i had said it was complex it yeah it is it, it is complex perhaps even uh, uh intricate and you will say that that there is much to be learned uh much as has been done there's still a lot more to be done uh because when you look at um the origins of this uh well some of the supposed origins of this latest instance uh travelers you know going needing to go through just on route somewhere else and then somehow being uh, spontaneously attacked it led to reprisals as it is thought um so what is it that triggers this no doubt must be at the heart the of of um knots that must be undone uh by all our stakeholders um taking into consideration so many different things that only a person on the ground perhaps could understand uh, better than those that are viewing it from afar yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, what we have learned over the years is it, it, we're, we're seeing some kind of a transformation of the conflict, intercommunal conflict, or whatever conflict you want to call it, to you know, uh, sheer criminality. Really, um, okay. oftentimes you hear of farmer harder conflict, for example, but in reality, what is going on is just the activities, nefarious activities of some individuals who are cashing in on you know the farmer had that conflict to do all sort of things and of course i'm not saying that that conflict doesn't exist but if you look at it in the heart of the conflict are uh, issues and actors uh, that are perhaps shadow actors that are acting and to see or rather uh, that uh, we, i mean to produce a kind of social consequences or effect
project mm -hmm. that we are seeing. Uh, what, what happened recently in terms of the attacks, so that's continuous attack, if I may borrow your words, of those uh, commuters or uh, travelers from Ondo, I, I think was just a crass act of criminality, and it must be treated as such. It is not something that has to do with any conflict, you know, whether between the Fulani or the, the Irigwe people. No, it, it happened because, of course, there are criminals amongst us and young people who perhaps have been engaged in all sorts of gang and cultis, gang wars and cultism and all that, who take advantage of these existing tensions between different ethno-religious groups and oftentimes, you know, exacerbating or, you know, uh, making it to de degenerate into violence. And so that was what we saw. But if if anything to go by, and like I've said, based on the lessons we've learned, if, they, if those lessons are anything to go by, is that we must be able to distinguish clearly between what is criminality and what is intercommunal conflict. Indeed. Because if we don't deal with it as such, if we don't deal with it as such, then we stand the risk of seeing this thing degenerating to a point of no gravitation, as we have seen it. The issues, whether ethno religious or uh, and what, no, look. I don't think there is anything like ethno-religious conflict from what we've said. I mean, there is a whole body of literature, uh, you know, showing clearly that, of course, the manifestations of the violence might I take ethno-religious dimensions, that they may not necessarily be the cause, whether approximate or root cause of the conflict. And we need to be very clear about that. Okay. Uh, the manifestation, of course, when there is an attack, usually, or when there is a crisis in the state, uh, Muslims would look out perhaps for a church to attack, and Christians would look for a church, I mean, for a mosque to attack. But that no, does not necessarily mean that they are doing it because of religious differences. Okay. Uh, people I, I get tend you. to exploit all of that going forward. But it is very important that we understand where we are at the moment. I think we truly do based on our engagement with the stakeholders and engagement with the government and all other people who are involved in the resolution of this crisis okay. uh, the categorization the characterization is very very key to developing the kind of comprehensive intervention that is able to help us transform the very conditions that engender the conflict in the first place Indeed. and i think that's the oh, kind oh, of conversation oh, okay you know you I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna come back to you because um, hopefully you can stay with us okay. uh, which is not the case with uzon uh, unfortunately um, um, because um, he has to get on with it uh, in uh, other places. Now, Uzona, coming back to you, um, just before you nip off, uh, the anniversary that was alluded to there, you first of all alluded to it, and so did uh, Joseph there. Um, it, it, the, the, they had wanted to observe the anniversary by what they referred to as, um, that is, citizens, some some people uh, as a candlelight kind of peaceful protest of remembrance but the government stepped in and and um, it, it didn't it didn't happen government didn't allow uh, such a an event um, what's the understanding there is it because things are still a bit too tense and so forth therefore unpredictable Exactly. It will be too insensitive for anyone to uh, allow a gathering or a protest, whether peaceful or not, you know, within this period in, in just and in Plateau State, understanding what has happened here or what is going on here. So um, government coming, stepping in to say that can happen now is, is understandable. However, on that particular day, on the 7th of September, there was an event here that was well organized by uh, the Peace Building uh, Committee and um, where they remembered, you know, it's a kind of memorial for what happened in, in Plateau State 20 years ago, just re-emphasizing the need for people to understand themselves and allow peace uh, to reign. But that protest, as people, some people wanted it, did not hold and the reason is not uh, far-fetched. The, t the situation here wouldn't allow such gathering or wouldn't be um, kind enough to permit that ca gathering. Okay, then, Uzon, uh, I think uh, we're going to have to really let go of you now because um, we did do know and do appreciate that you sort of carved this into your day schedule today as well. Thank you very much, uh, Uzon. Uzon uh, Onoyen, Executive Editor, uh, TVC News. Um, but we still have with us uh, in studio uh, here Mr. Dario Dufoko. Uh, uh, you understand, of course, we had to grab hold of the remote guests because um, anything could happen. And so, so uh, in terms of... Um, the internet. And exactly. Internet, yeah. um, you you've heard it it seems that mm. much as we're talking about just there are lessons coming out of just for just about everywhere else in the country um, it was occurring to me as those two gentlemen were speaking um, it's it, it actually 
it's uh, it, it, sometimes all it takes is a spark and then the whole thing we have a conflagration on our hands yeah. um, what what would be the lessons that you think other people could also uh, learn because uh, Joseph was just saying Joseph Lengman was just saying in there that lessons have been learned and that everybody is coming together to sort out what is evidently a very complex issue. Some of the reasons, uh, it, it might be convenient to say, have been lost in, that, in antiquity, uh, rather than begin to go into right. them and uh, yeah. reopen old wounds. Uh, but what are some of those lessons that you think uh, others could learn? You see, when I was listening to those two gentlemen out there, uh, you see, I personally learned a lot of lessons. I was wishing that uh, Everybody in position of authority, everybody concerned about how to resolve <coughs> our national security issues would key into what is happening in a plateau, dissect it, <coughs> and find possible ways of resolving issues. And one of which is the peace building agency. I heard about this peace building agency about two years ago or so, or a year ago, I'm not too sure. I am particularly interested in what is happening in Plateau because in 2001, precisely, it was in the month of uh, September. Mm -hmm. During that crisis, I was in Joss. I have I've left Katina State, where I was resident. Uh, I was lecturing in the Polytechnic for a Rotary International program in uh, around Grand Cyril area of Bukuru. And they were there when the killing started. And they were. Uh, many Rotarians listening will remember that uh, terrible incident. Mm -hmm. We were trapped. We saw things we ought not to have seen. And these are things that never left. They never leave your psyche. My psyche mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. I returned. Unfortunately, returning to Katina through Kano, that was a crisis in Kano, just as we got to Kano. So that year, one. It was a very challenging. And one. then since then, Plateau has not been the same. But if you look at what Governor Lalong uh, has been able to do with the issue of peace on the plateau, you see, uh, I mean, not like everything he's doing, but I tell you, I am amazed by what he is doing to ensure peace. I remember him being a speaker at the point and almost having issues with the governor over how to undo the issue of clashes and living together. I think he understands what is needed and he's doing it. He, he, he coming up with this kind of a peace building uh, agency that requires everybody mm. sitting down to discuss how we want to live mm. together. Mm. For six years, mm -hmm. six good years, we never had any serious issue from the plateau. Very unusual from 2001. Go and take, check, take the years from 2001. It's almost on a yearly basis. Yeah. But since he, he's years. been around for six years until two months ago yeah and then we saw this coming and you're listening to mr joseph there alluding to the fact that in as much as the government is trying to say look we'll end this there are people out there who are also very determined to say we must return to our care, uh, our, our terrible ways. Indeed. And that has been affecting what the government that's, is doing. That's but part of the challenge. Uh, we, we, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Mm. We're, I've got to go off on a break now. Uh, but um, um, Joseph, we'll be right back. Please stay with us and uh, we'll continue and we'll come over to you. Uh, stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And uh, we're looking at the situation in Plateau and the returning peace, but it is not without work or indeed uh, some effort. And we've been joined this morning by Mr. Joseph Langman, uh, who is Director General of the Plateau Peace Building uh, Agency. Um, now, can you still hear us? Do yeah, I can hear you. I'm okay. still here. Thank okay. you. Oh, okay. Um, so I wanted to ask um, how easy or challenging is it? Uh, to bring all the uh, uh, parties together, uh, because all interested parties, I understand, you know, somehow have a stake in your agency. So um, it's, it, it's, it sounds like an ideal situation, but you're working it. You have a hands-on approach. How, how challenging or indeed easy is it? Well, I mean, it's... it's uh, um 
I, I think it's, it's a mixed kind of a bag, I would say. Uh, challenging in the sense that uh, usually you have the stakeholders coming sitting together around. Yes. Because the table. I understand that and your agency, sorry, I understand that your agency leaves no party out. Uh, absolutely. The whole idea behind peace building is about inclusion. If, if any party feels marginalized or alienated from the process, uh, then you, you don't get the buy-in of, of, of the stakeholders. And uh, so long as the buy-in of the stakeholder isn't there, then you, you should think that, the, 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 that that's going to be an effort in futility. But for us here, I think we've enjoyed that level of, uh, you know, uh, I would say a buy-in and, and respect uh, by the sheer convening power that the peace building agency has, working together with a wide range of stakeholders, like I've told you earlier on. And there has never been a time that we call any stakeholder and they turn, off, turn their back on us, never. Uh, there is a you know, relationship that is defined or characterized by mutual respect and confidence and trust. Uh, but the problem now is that you, know, you have these stakeholders, uh, some of them very committed, you know, to the pursuit of peace or working in concert to deliver on the promise of peace and security. But there are some who only come to pay lip service. So one of the lessons that we've learned within the last 20 years uh, uh, of, of our own crisis and, uh, you know, uh, restiveness here in the plateau is that uh, there isn't much sincerity of purpose on the part of some of the stakeholders. And uh, some of these stakeholders who we see or perhaps one could describe as peace spoilers are there and their impact could such could have such a i mean but their potential impact could have such a devastating effect or whatever it is the rest of the stakeholders are looking to build you know as part of their own commitment to deepening the peace in the state mm. so yes uh, that that sense of insincerity which i think we have to find a way uh, you know going forward to deal with to, it to, uh, to, to so grapple with. understand yes the yes. seriousness of what we are doing and, yeah. and and this is more like the work of god we don't have to lie around or about issues of peace and conflict because if we do everything you are looking to view would collapse uh, on your face Indeed. like a pack of cats one moment yeah, joseph exactly one, that's what, one, one yes. moment joseph let, let, let me bring on uh, uh musa mr musa has called in from bochi state good morning morning mr yori thank you for calling in uh uh, I am really appreciating this uh, program you are presenting. And I uh, really appreciate from the local government, just a local government that has borders with Plateau State. Mm. So uh, we are always affected by what is happening in Joss because whenever these things happen, so we really suffered a lot as a result of most of our business are done in Joss. And uh, as you are guest, the, uh, the other your editor said, we really appreciate what Governor Lalon is doing toward bringing peace in Jos, and uh, we are really commending him for that. And we pray for all our leaders to emulate his uh, doggedness in, that, in, 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 in bringing back peace in Jos, so that we can have peace in Nigeria and live with one another. Indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Musa, calling in from Bauchi there. And, um, you know, uh, Dari, the, it, it is speculated that this crisis sort of erupted around this time because of the proximity in time uh, to uh, an election coming up. And since uh, Joseph is telling us that not just the governor, but everybody virtually uh, is on board, even as he was, you know, also uh, not shying away from the caveat that there are some that are not really as sincere as they could be, and there are some who simply are not interested uh, in, in a resolution of, of the matter. So um, the, the, the situation we, we, we have on our hands then, I was looking at the, if the governor and all those other people I was talking about, maybe the governor will have to give up something as well because I don't know how the um, people, some of the people might perceive uh, the intentions of the governor um, I don't know. This remains for analysts to to to, to comment to on. Uh, you, you see, we, uh, Mr. Joseph, uh, actually, I want to also appreciate his uh, sincerity. Uh, hold the thought, please. Let me bring in um, Ibrahim from Kaduna. Good morning, Mr. Ibrahim in Kaduna. Uh, good morning, Uncle Yori, and good morning to your guest over there. Yes, yeah. thank you. Good morning. Is, uh, Ibrahim from Kaduna. You see, this topic you bring up this morning was quite... That is very important to us because it's all revolved around security. You see, the security challenges in, in Nigeria and indeed Plateau in particular is very, very vital to us and we need to get down to the root. It is said that you have almost every hook and cranny in that state 
have one local government have majority of them like a kind ethnicity. In fact, it's a factor. I would really need to get down to it. Many things involve political, religious, and ethnic city differences. All these come along. And we cannot throw it away, but what we need here is the solution. You see, the people of London should know the importance of that class because why? Of the of the nature of how God created that area. And this really brings many to now now make many people to have more, more and more interest. And that interest cannot be jeopardized okay. by them themselves. Mm. They should just come together and understand because why? It's a good is everybody business. All of us must come on. I would like the government and those of us to have to, in, to introduce what we call sec, uh, community security. Because we need to, we need to introduce that one now for them. Let them be the one to secure the environment and understand what, who they are and what they want. Because challenges there and there and security challenges there and there, it will never bring help, it will never bring up any development. And finally, because we are unity and love, we are to development in and to supporting development in everywhere. Nigeria, we must work, must succeed. All this evil did we go we go away one day. Thank Indeed. you very much. I'm going to deliver us back. Indeed, thank you uh, very much uh, for calling in. So, I'll return to you. We're yeah. going to look at some of the. It's a difficult the, subject. The issue is very complex. Mm -hmm. Very, very complex. But let, 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 let me say this. From my understanding of uh, the issues on the plateau, I can tell you that everything now boils down to politics. I'll explain. There used to be religious issues, there are ethnicity issues. But I tell you that. Somehow in the last 10 years, the people of Plateau State have been able to work out how they want to exist together mm -hmm. as per religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've visited the Plateau severally after 2001. And I tell you, the, there is mutual respect for each other when it comes to religion. Now, so much. You see that. It's, it's, you, can, you can feel it. It's palpable. There is also... Somehow it has happened that these people have worked out how they want to exist together as different ethnic groups. There is mutual respect and understanding among the various ethnic groups. Far much more better than it used to be. So it is most unlikely that such things will spark crisis as it used to be. I'm so, not really it. So, uh, and you, but as you know, you, Joseph has pointed out, to, yes. there are some like the peace building initiative mm. it, it, from my study of it is such that even when there are issues and this is brought before the agency it is like bringing it before everybody involved so every stakeholder is there to have a say in how that issue is resolved and such issues don't get to become uh, violent anymore Issues that because all, all, the the board. All, all the parties see I the vote, agency and you as, all have your as, as neutral. Yes. That's very important. And, uh, Mr. George, thank you very much for holding on. Go right ahead now, please. Uh, good morning. Um, greetings to your guests. Thank you. Good morning. Mr. please permit me to treat this uh, subject of insecurity beyond the battle stage. As we speak now, I'm seeing on the screen of your uh, TV saying that the chief of army staff is saying that the army is winning the war against bandits. At the same time, there is another news item there that says the NBC director and his daughter in Casino State have been abducted yeah. or kidnapped by the bandits. I'm at a loss as to how we are winning. Can someone please explain this claim by the military to us? How are we winning the war on banditry? Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. George. Um, that's that that one. Uh, <laughs> well, to the extent that we're talking about security, yes, I can understand. But you know, you've always got to have parameters for a conversation, and we're looking at the situation in 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 in, in, in plateau uh, uh, right now, Mr. George. Uh, bear with us. Uh, a commentary on what you've just pointed out might indeed come on uh, come up as uh, as we uh, talk about the matter. Um, uh, so, you, uh, well, let, let, let me bring that home. Let me bring that matter back to Joseph. Okay. Um, uh, uh, my sort of searching, if there were, if there was a political aspect to this, because we are all 
we're, we're political animals. We're human. We're political animals. Um, but your agency, uh, the Peace Building Agency, uh, I imagine is, you know, it, it's sort of a neutral uh, uh, body that everyone trusts, as uh, Dari was just saying, and I imagine you will confirm or you would explain if he was uh, uh, not getting it right. Everybody is like bringing the matter between all the parties concerned. Now, how do you handle mm -hmm. the political aspects, if indeed there are any of those, uh, or even determine that some actions are politically motivated? Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, the, the political element in the equation is always there. I mean, while it is difficult to explain, you know, the violence or the attacks and all that is happening in the state, uh, I mean, just using one single intervening variable. Mm. Um, uh, but, but of course, uh, the political angle or element it is quite a very potent explanatory force. Uh, in that respect and then reason being that i mean we saw this uh, recurrence or relapse into violence at the heels of the local government elections and there are also arguments that have been put forward that as we go into 2023 there are people who would want to use you know for whatever political reasons uh, this crisis in order to you know uh, negotiate the political dispensation or the negotiate the political cell, uh, space itself uh, so it, it's a very complex thing and what the agency tries to do is to you know even uh, try as much as possible to de-emphasize you know uh, the role okay. of politics and how we <laughs> you know harness uh, you know or bring stakeholders together in order to build a consensus around you know conflict issues uh, as we see them but that cannot be overruled okay. you know the agency itself like you said uh, it's, it's a neutral non-partisan organization and that is a credit to his excellency the executive governor or governor of Plato state who's philosophy essentially is about inclusion mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately that inclusivity today is being misconstrued misrepresented or even misunderstood by a vast majority of, of some of our citizens but the good thing is that the governor is very resolute and determined and i think he said he would rather be remembered as a peacemaker okay. And a peacemaker usually will take a tough decision. I think he's guided more by his humanity than any other consideration. It's not politics for him, I don't think so. It's not religion for him, I don't think so. I don't think it is also about Let me uh, ethnicity. And for that reason, we, I mean, he set up the first, you know, uh, peace building agency uh, by Let me come back to you. Let, let, let me come back to you yeah. on the point. Let me come back to you on this point because yeah. I, I want to bring in Simon, who has called in from Joss. Good morning, Simon. Okay. Yeah, good morning, sir. Thank you for calling. Go ahead quickly, please. Uh, I would like to comment your program. You're very kind. And I would like to assure you that we in Jos have enjoyed a relative peace for the past six years. But the truth is that all these stakeholders are not transparent. They are not sincere. They, they sit down on a, on a table to discuss and they go to the other side, it's a different game, uh, ball game. So I don't know mm. who is deceiving who on the platform. Okay. <laughs> There's no sincerity. Uh, all right. One, the governor, he has done well. But there he should checkmate what's happening on the plateau. Okay. There's no sincerity at all. All right then. Thank you very much for calling in, Simon. And let me quickly return to um, uh, Joseph because I had interrupted him. And I had said I'd revisit a point you had made. And that is where you said that um, uh, the vast majority, your words, uh, seem to be uh, uh, misunderstanding uh, the, the work or the role of the agency. Could you, could you explain that? Because you used the word vast majority. And that, that worried me a bit because I thought you, you were on board with everybody. Yeah, we are on board with everybody, and I'm talking about I mean those who they, they I mean those who were I mean the governor's traducers, if I may use that word, and uh, uh, those uh, okay. who want to look at everything from uh, from uh, a political okay. lens. Yeah, exactly. That's what I am talking about. Not about the vast majority of ordinary citizens there who out there who are concerned oh, by you know the state right. of instability. No, no, that's not what I mean. I, I need to correct that very quickly. All I was trying to say is that look, the governor's philosophy of peace and stability okay. is a very, very profound philosophy, which of course is resonating with our people because what you hear today again is look beyond what government can do. Uh, the reality is that the you know quest 
for peace and stability mm -hmm. is a responsibility that everybody has to take very seriously. Gone are the days where government unilaterally is able to deliver on the promise of peace and security. Let me so come, it's something come, that we come back to you, now. Joseph. I beg your pardon. Let me come back yes. to you, Joseph, because I want to bring on yes. Mrs. Ladeji, who has called in from Jos. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Uncle Yori. How good. are you today? Very well, thank you. Yes. Uh, you see, this just matter. Without justice, there will be no peace. Good morning. How are you today? Very well, yes. thank you. And I heard uh, your statement. The issue of justice are very peaceful people, whether indigenous or non indigenous But you see, the political elites are the ones causing us trouble. That is number one. Number two, the problem we are having is insincerity of the government. And then where there is no justice, there can be no peace. These people that are killing us every day, nobody has been apprehended, prosecuted, and brought to, boot, to justice. You know, people must be taken. When, when what happened uh, with the Odo people the other time? We saw a helicopter flying up and that was just what is happening. People have been killed in just for how many years, how many months? In recent time, how many months? Who is doing what about that? If they don't, if the security is not beefed up, those are the ones they are talking about, your people are talking about hostels. I have children in hostels that I have to pay to go home. The situation was terrible until people started shouting and talking about it before government. They are doing something about it. I have never had that. All these uh, killing in Miango, I haven't seen, I haven't had that government went there and do something or put, give them palliative or nothing. Let us be honest. There must be justice. On a normal day, we are very peaceful people. I've been in just for over 40 years. I have enjoyed just. I'm a negotiating woman, but I, this is my home. But let us be honest. You know, if government do the needful, All right, don't, then. don't give our justice to others and leave others. All the, right. play, the, the people in Uruguay, are like, they not human beings that are killing like that? Every day, real, the same thing. Barack in like, the same thing. Baka, the same thing. What is this? Like government, you know, the Southwest now, they are building up, they are doing Amateko and everything. What are we doing to protect people here? And people are just really being killed like chicken. When it happens, we rise up and run up and down. When the thing die down, it die down, and the thing comes up again. They should do the need for default security and do justice. All right, Once Mrs. Ladiji, I want to thank you very much for calling in. I appreciate your call. Thank you, thank you very much for calling in. Um, uh, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to bring this to you, Joseph. Uh, how would you respond to citizens who feel the way Mrs. Ladiji is feeling? Who feel that there's yeah, so know, the, much the, talk? Yeah, that, that, and she's, she's giving the yeah, impression think, of there's so much <laughs> motion but no movement. Uh, no, there is no movement. I mean, I mean, there is movement actually at the moment because, uh, like you said earlier, on the the the, the coffee has been relaxed and and the situ security situation is improving. And of course, a testament to uh, I mean, to a large extent why even the government had to consider re reviewing or relaxing the coffee itself. Uh, the but, situation but the is improving sorry, sorry, by the day. Sorry, sir. But what, to the impression yeah. specifically that she appears to have taken, uh, which is that. There has to be fairness before we can begin to constructively engage on peace. Uh, absolutely. But see, again, that's the danger of the single story, like I've always said. When I mean, you hear this call over and over again, of course, a legitimate call, by the way, that without justice, there can never be peace. But uh, people tend to forget that, of course, uh, there are different types of justice. Uh, there are different phases of justice, or perhaps frameworks, if I may use that word. And for us, as a peace building agency, we pursue the restorative justice, while the government and other institutions of government or departments also pursue the legalistic framework of justice. These two frameworks need to be pursued simultaneously for us to get there. But the whole notion that only retributive justice can deliver okay. for us, or can take us out of this quagmire, is a mirage. And if you are going to draw lessons 
citizens from experiences of other post-conflict societies like South Africa, Liberia, Sierra Leone, who have had a similar experience of what we are going and, through and, today. And, of I, course, I, I understand. understand you. Joseph, you jo Joseph, I beg yeah. your pardon. Yeah. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I yeah. understand what you're saying, but I, I just want you to address very quickly, if you could, because we've run out of time, uh, the perception that yeah. uh, there, there doesn't seem to be an even hand from official reaction. She particularly alluded to the last, the most, uh, the immediate uh, unfortunate incident, uh, and to paraphrase her words, there were helicopters all over the place. Yet there had been incidents in the past uh, that uh, you know, hadn't uh, gotten that kind of a reaction. So she's clearly alluding to a sense of uh, some people seem to be more important when it comes to authorities when when crises like this seem to um, erupt. Very briefly, please. That, that's a pers yeah, there's a perspective. There are so many perspectives to all of these issues. Reality is to look. We are faced with a very big challenge in this state and up across the country. The question of insecurity or government insecurity is not only peculiar to Plateau State alone. It is something that is uh, national. And of course, for us in the Plateau State Peace Building Agency or for, on the part of the Plateau State government, there are two pronged approach to dealing with this. Of course, the security provisioning co component and also the peace building component. And just like the question of justice, retributive justice and restorative justice, this needs to be pursued simultaneously. The same thing. I mean, the investment we make in security provisioning must also respond with the investment we make in uh, conflict prevention and peace building. Okay, Joseph. Yet again, uh, Joseph, the, complex, I'm afraid, the complex nature of the issue. Uh, uh, Joseph, I'm afraid that tyrant yeah. called time has just imposed oh. himself on us. I'm so sorry, okay. but it's been a, 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 a it's, remarkably it's okay. enlightening uh, time with you. And I want to thank you for making yourself available. Uh, Joseph Langman, uh, DG Plateau Peace Building, uh, Building Asian Agency. And uh, Dario Dufo, you'll really. understand. Thank you. thank you very much. You'll understand that I have to really quickly run off. So I would Hoping that I'd add one more question for you in studio, uh, Dari Odufoko, Assistant Editor of the Nation Newspaper. Thank you very much uh, for Pleasure. coming on the program today. So that's our program. As I always like to add, consider taking up the government on its offer of um, a COVID vaccine. It's out there. And, um, you know, do all the other things as well. I'm Yori Fulana. I'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Bye-bye for now.